this just looks incredibly good. I'm gonna take that top piece. <laughs> Look at that. It's salty. You got the mix of the, the fat and the meat. That is wonderful. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Rome, Italy. We just got off the metro at Piramide Station and now walking over to Testaccio Market, which is not too far away from here. There should be some amazing food there. Just arriving now to Testaccio Market and from what I understand, this is an old market but it has been relocated to this new location and it's nice and brightly lit, naturally lit. You can buy everything from fresh vegetables and fruits to meats to prepared food, all sorts of prepared food. There are places like delis and cafes. This is just kind of an all things food under one roof and a beautiful roof. Okay. That's all, thank you. Grazie, thank you. Ying and I saw the beautiful fruit, especially the cherries and the grapes, and had to get some. Although all the fruit looks really, really good. You just gotta see this whole stock of green grapes I just bought. Oh, yes. Grapes are just an amazing thing. A whole vine of them. Grapes, grab a couple. Wow. Those are incredibly juicy. With just a little bit of bitterness from the seeds that are still in it. Oh wow, those are good. Mm. The grapes are just an absolutely fantastic snacking fruit. You can just sit here and just eat a whole vine of grapes. And they're just perfectly bite-sized as well. And the same goes for cherries. Perfect little bites of delicious fruit. And also along with all the food in the market, you can also buy clothes, there are shoe shops, there are some household necessity shops as well. So it's kind of an all-around, all well-rounded market where you can buy just about anything you need for your house, but especially focused on lots of food. Hello. Panini con picciapo. For my first thing to eat, I have come to a stall and he specializes in all sorts of different Roman dishes inside of a sandwich, a panini sandwich. And so I ordered off the menu, it's called panino con picciapo. And it, I think it's a type of meat which is braised in tomato sauce. He does have some stools here that you can sit right in the market and enjoy and this is a, a lovely place. So yeah, come, come get a close-up view of what's inside of this. Oh yeah, that bread feels wonderful. It looks like, like shredded meat uh, with lots of tomatoes, sauce, and maybe a few small assorted vegetables inside as well. Oh yeah. And that's like a, I think it's beef. It's like a stewed tomato beef filled into a, a bun, bread. Oh yeah. It's the type of sandwich that when you take a bite, the, the insides sort of squeeze out because of that pressure. That was a great way to start walking around this market. And now we are off to go find something else. But what I'm already loving about this market is how friendly it is and how how wide open the aisles are and I also love this natural light. It gives it such a like a charming feel to it. And yet it's not it's not like it's not too busy. Maybe it's the time I'm here. And it's just friendly and relaxing. Lots of space, good food, a fantastic place to just walk around and explore. Ah. 
prosciutto? Sì. Di montagna? Sì. Ok. Quanto? Buon. Sì, 10. Uh, 200. 200. Grazie. For my next stop, I have come to a place called Enzo and Lina, and they are especially known for their prosciutto, as well as, it's kind of a whole deli. I saw people in front of me were ordering full sandwiches, choosing their meat, and then slicing it up, and then putting it into bread with cheese and some pickles, and the owners are extremely nice and friendly, and I noticed what I really liked about them is that when I was standing up front at the counter, they were conversing with all of their customers and chatting and having a good time while serving food. I, of course, don't speak Italian, but it was still a really friendly experience, and you could sense the, the generosity and the kindness of the owners. Let's see what goodies I got. I didn't fully know what I was doing, but I decided to go no bread because I just had that whole bread sandwich. And so I'm sure this would be really good in bread as well. But I got some of their, I think this one is called the prosciutto di montagna. And he sliced it up. I got 200 grams. Oh, wow, that's quite a lot. This just looks incredibly good. I'm going to take that top piece. Look at that. Yeah, that's marvelous. Mmm. Cured pork. It's salty. It's you got the mix of the the fat and the meat. That is wonderful. And in addition to this, I also got a little packet of the the fresh mozzarella bufala. And it was a it's a little ball and then he sliced it into pieces for me. Oh that texture. Oh the softness of that. Wow. Oh that's amazing. That combination is insane. The mozzarella is amazing. I don't know if I've ever had mozzarella like that. It is the, both the texture and the flavor. The flavor is Kind of mild and not too salty, a little bit salty, but then just it's it's milky, it's curdy, it's it's awesome, it's just amazing stuff. It's like milk gushes out when you start chewing. Another piece of this. This is actually a lot of meat. Yeah. It's very, very rich, so it would go good with bread, that's for sure. They were so friendly and so nice there. I wish I could speak Italian to talk to them more, but that was fantastic. The mozzarella in particular really blew me away. That mozzarella was insane. Can I have the pepper, apple, lemon juice? Okay. This one. Small, medium, or large? Uh, medium, please. After that wonderful salty meat, I thought it would be a good idea to have a juice. And so this place is called Zoe. And they specialize in different types of juices as well as some healthy salads I think are going on behind me and sandwiches. Uh, but I just came here for a juice. And when I ordered, they have a list of different juices. They have some really interesting combinations that include both vegetables and fruits. And they also have different properties like antioxidant or slimming. I happen to get one for slimming but not not because I, I want the slimming, but because it's an interesting combination. And so it is a combination of green apple and lemon, and also pepper. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, that is perfect after what I just ate. It's sour. It's just perfectly sweet, naturally sweet. Did I taste the pepper? Let me get one more, one more drink. Just a faint pepper taste to it, but it's really, it's really nice with green apple and lemon and just a faint pepper flavor to it. 
That is one high quality, awesome mixture juice. There's another sandwich that I don't want to leave this market without eating, and it's located right on the outside of the market. The stall is called Street Food. They have a number of all sorts of, actually their menu is pretty diverse. They have a lot of different things from pastas to sandwiches. Under the recommendation of Valentina and Antonio, I ordered the panino con lampradotto, which is a uh, cow stomach. And I think it's boiled. Oh, there might be some pieces of beef in here too, but mostly beef stomach and then put into a piece of bread with some kind of an herb dressing. It smells. You can you can definitely smell that stomach. That stomach is definitely jiggly in texture. But it's wonderful within a sandwich because the bread is gummy and and crusty and then just with that soft kind of chewy gelatinous stomach in there. Mm. This is good, but you definitely have to love tripe to order this one. And then I also ordered a filetti di bacalao, and this is a, a fried piece of fish. I got a nice horseshoe shape, and I think it's battered as well. Mm. That's really good. It has a very thick batter. It's crispy and gooey, and then the fish just Sort of, it's very, very soft. For me, that tripe sandwich, it was a little bit on the plain side. I would have liked maybe some extra, full, something flavorful to go with that tripe. Uh, I think it was just pretty much boiled with just a little bit of a sour sauce with maybe some parsley in it. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was kind of on the plain side. But this entire market experience has been fantastic. I think my favorite thing had to be that, that buffalo mozzarella and the prosciutto. This is our final full day in Rome. Tomorrow we are moving on to the next location. But so today we just kind of just wanted to enjoy and just relax and just kind of walk around and just have a leisure day in Rome. We spent about an hour back at the hotel room after the market eating lots and lots of cherries and finishing off those grapes, which were amazing. And now actually our hotel happens to be very close to Villa Borghese, which is a big park and it is a garden and also there is a famous gallery within the the gardens and that's what we are going to visit next and also just to walk around the park for a little while this is a whole map of the entire park and gardens we are going to head first over to the museo borghese the big evergreen trees are cut all the branches are cut off so it just has like a little a little hat on the top. Oh, there's a train. I didn't know that. Hello. <laughs> I guess you can ride a train and you can also rent these like golf cart bicycles to pedal around. Just about a 10 minute walk through the park and we have arrived to the Villa Borghese which is now called the Gallery Borghese and it's a museum. I previously, actually just yesterday, I booked my tickets online and you have to book online. I don't think you can just walk up and get your ticket. And immediately upon entrance, you enter into this huge room with a really high ceiling and the ceiling is just incredible. And this is a former mansion, a, a villa which is now turned into a museum. It's a gallery with many important paintings and sculptures. And I know especially there are some paintings uh, by Raphael and also by Caravaggio. Within this museum, there are over 20 rooms on two stories. You can choose to rent an audio guide to walk you through this museum. 
but they also, in every one of the rooms, they have these big laminated cards that you can read information and you can read about the room and also read about the different things that are within the room. So that's very helpful to, to guide yourself through this museum. Right now, I am in the Gallery of the Emperors. And then above me on the ceiling is Domenico de Angelis, the triumph of Galatea. And what I really like about this museum is that they, they really control and manage the amount of people that are let in per day and per time slot. So although you do have to pre-book in advance to ensure that you get a ticket, once you're inside it has a, it has a perfect feel because it's not too busy um, and it's just it's very well managed. And now we are exiting and on our way to a restaurant that is very close here, just a few minutes walk away I think, to have dinner tonight. Thank you. Two? For two, please. Yes. Here? Sure. Thank you. This is a real classic restaurant. It has been here since 1913. And you can just tell how... How do you, how do you say the name of this restaurant? Fiascheteria Marini. Fiascheteria. Fiasco. Fiascheteria. Fiasco is a bottle. Oh, okay. The fiasco, it's typical Italian bottle. Uh, and it's from the from Toscana. Okay. From Toscana. And that's what the name of the restaurant is? Yes. yes. Fiaschetteria because uh, Fiaschetteria. 100 years old we have only this. Okay. Fiaschi, fiaschi, fiaschi. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this restaurant has been here since 1930? Yes. My generation is the fifth generation. So it's all your family? Yes. All, all my family, yes. You're the fifth. Wow. Oh, wow. Very cool. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Grazie. Ying and I got here pretty early right as they opened for dinner, so we are the first here for dinner tonight. And we got this, I think maybe the best seat in the restaurant, which is right, we're not sitting outside, but we are sitting right next to the full door that opens. So it's basically outdoors. We have fresh air coming from the street, a view of the smart cars. <laughs> and this is a wonderful restaurant. You can feel the classic heritage feel of it. They have a pretty concise menu, it's not huge, um, but I, it took me some time to navigate it a little bit and the owner, he helped me decide what to order. Uh, but So ordered a couple of different dishes, but I like how it's not too huge of a menu. You, it's very manageable and you know that they're gonna prepare the dishes with expertise. You know that a restaurant is a classic when the theme color is mustard green. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First course has arrived. Got two different pasta dishes. This one is the gnocchi, and this is a potato pasta, little nugget sized potato pasta. It looks very cheesy, and I think this is also the cured uh, pork cheek. I'm gonna start with this. Those are so like pillowy soft and just sort of, they're just like little pillows of, of pasta. That is marvelously good and it is very rich and very cheesy. And then those little bits of salty cured pork and then, but what's really amazing is how the gnocchi just sort of, they're so soft and yet like so smooth that they just sort of just straight up blend into that cheese sauce. Yeah, that is a richly delicious dish. And they're so rich and so soft, but at the same time, gnocchi is very dense. And we also ordered a matriciana. And this is one of the pasta dishes I've already had, but I really love it because I'm a, I'm a tomato kind of guy, actually. I really like the, the flavor, the tartness of tomatoes, so we had to get it here. Pasta, there's cheese on top, and also, again, the cured pork cheek. And this looks wonderful. Mm. Yeah, and I love the cheesy pastas, but I'm really a tomato pasta kind of guy, though. I love that tartness and the, the, the flavor that the tomatoes provide. In contrast to the gnocchi, which are just completely soft through and through, 
this pasta is very al dente and you can has a lovely like chewy texture to it it's fantastic it's really good just a little bit i like how they sprinkle on just a little bit of cheese but not they didn't overdo it on the cheese let's get a close-up look at this sauce and also that pork that pork cheek mm. That is excellent. Mm. I completely forgot the name of this dish, but it's like a, a beef salad, and there's beef on the bottom, and then there is rocket arugula all over the top, and then it's sprinkled with, I think, strips of cheese, shavings of cheese, and then tomatoes are around the outside. Let me try to get a little bit of everything in one bite with some of the cheese, some of that. Wait, is it cheesy? With some of the. A little bit of everything in one of those tomatoes. Beautiful little tomatoes. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. It's like tender stewed beef of some kind. And then with the like light horseradishy flavor from the arugula. And then this vibrant tasting tomato. It's a wonderfully like simple but delicious combination of a dish. Oh, and it gets juicier the further you go down there, the beef. Oh, wonderful. The tomatoes, the tomatoes are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I also got a plate of fennel. And I think this is sauteed in butter. Mm. Mm. Really soft, kind of like cooked cabbage. But then you can taste a little bit of that fennel flavor. And it almost has a caraway flavor to it. And that turned out to be an amazing dinner. This is a gem of a restaurant. And not only was the food good, the pasta and that beef dish, and I'm sure everything on the menu, but the owners, and it's, it's now run, are now the fifth generation of this family that owns the restaurant. They're also very friendly, very nice. The menu is even all in Italian, but they will explain to you the menu. A great, great restaurant. And this actually happens to be, I think this will be our last meal. I don't think we're gonna be able to fit any other meals in Rome tomorrow because we leave tomorrow. A fantastic last meal in Rome. Thank you all very much for watching this video. We're gonna just head back home, back to the hotel for tonight. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you again for watching. Cool. That was a pigeon behind me. Okay, so I ordered the panini. What is it called? And we also ordered the amatri. Amatriciani.